Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com. Uh, we're only a few weeks away from SC. Both Jeff and I will be there. Uh, we will also have limited edition RCE t-shirts. So if you stop one of us and say you like the show, if we still have a shirt, have yourself a free t-shirt. Uh, See, that's the real reason to go, right? Forget all these computers and vendors and colleagues and stuff. It's it's to get the t-shirts and the swag. That's the yeah. real reason to go to SC. We all know this. Yes, yes. It's all about the swag. But I guess if you really don't want another free t-shirt, you can just stop and say that you like the show also. And it's nice to always hear from somebody. Uh, it is always nice to hear that because this is this really is just two random guys doing a podcast. We really get no backing from our corporate overlords at all so uh uh this is truly a spare time thing so let us know if you like the show or if you hate it and you have some suggestions so so there you go okay jeff who's our guest today well we have uh the primary developer of a project whose pronunciation is very hotly debated from what i understand i've always said uh padby myself but apparently that is wrong and I think we'll be coached in our wrongness today by Mr. Ashley Pittman. So, Ashley, I wonder if you could uh, give us a brief introduction for yourself. Uh, hello, Jeff. Uh, yeah, my name is Ashley Pittman. Um, I'm based out of the UK, which probably explains the, uh, the disagreement in pronunciation. Um, <laughs> I've been working in MPI and, and HPC, uh, typically sort of comms libraries, for, for about 10 years now. And, and PADB is one of the things that, that's come out of that. So there it is, PADB rather than PADB. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you got me right off the bat there. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to forgive me because just uh, a year or two of, of just uh, conditioning, and I'm going to keep saying it the other way. So, well, anyway, let's just jump right into it. What is PADB? Um, very difficult question. It's a, it's a tool. It's a, it's a Unix command line tool for querying and, querying and giving you information about a parallel job that you that you might have running on your supercomputer, um, which is similar but not the same as a parallel debugger. So it will give you things like um, sort of parallel stack traces and, and job wide state of of you know of, of parallel jobs. So, but it still has things like you know, like you said, it has like stack and stuff in there. So, is the main feature that a parallel debugger would have is be able to look at source while it's running? Um, it, it doesn't allow you to look at source, so there's there's some overlap with a parallel debugger, although it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of the in depth features that you that you expect a debugger to have. So it's more for a, a brief overview or or being able to look at the at the parallel side of it rather than the, the necessarily the debugger side of it. Okay, so what what's the history? What was the motivation for writing PADB in in the first place? Um. It was oh, six or seven years ago now. I was working for Quadrix. Um, my main role there was was working on the collectives, programming the collectives, um, and we used to, you know, sort of write all this fancy new code and all these wonderful algorithms and send them off to people. And they'd come back and they they'd send me an email and say, "You've broken barrier again." Um, and what, <laughs> what what had happened nine times out of ten is they hadn't I hadn't broken barrier, but they'd broken their code and they had five hundred and eleven processes waiting in barrier and one process that wasn't. Um, and you know we sort of go through this process, and they say, well, well, you know, what you need is a parallel debugger. We've got a site license. Why don't you fire it up? And the answer is, well, that might be fine for you sat at your desk, but it's no good for me, two thousand miles away. Um, so it's a it's a a lightweight view of a lightweight way of of viewing what's happening within a parallel job, um, without going to the to the sort of overhead of of a full GUI session. Okay, that was the next thing I was going to ask. So this is completely a command line tool. It does not hook in with a GUI at all. Has anybody written a GUI to go on top of it? Have you written a GUI? Um, there have been several attempts at GUIs, and the it's one of the most it's one of the most po common questions I'm asked. If I, if I'm honest, um, I don't think it's particularly well suited to a GUI. I think it has it has strengths elsewhere, um, and I think if a GUI if, if there was to be a GUI put on it, then then it would lose some of those strengths, and in a way, it would become you know a sort of cheaper way, a cheaper alternative of some of the some of the existing parallel debuggers out there, and, and it would lose its unique selling point. 
All right, so let me let me jump back a little bit. So, as, as you said, it is kind of difficult to define exactly what PADB is. So, let me let me try and give the elevator pitch for this, and you tell me if I got it right. So, it's more of a, a point in time query kind of thing than than a full fledged debugger. It's something that can go out and say, "Hey, what are the stack traces right now?" Yeah, and, so and gives, other gives you a, a snapshot of state. Okay, and 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 your your chosen delivery mechanism for this really is the command line, and 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 one of the reasons I would imagine that could be useful is that some of the other debuggers could pick up uh, Pad B and and use it in the background. Is that ever a use case that you would envision? Um, yeah, that's that, that's a use case that's been discussed several times. Um, the other going along similar lines, the other way you can use it is you can use PADB to um, to look at the parallel. To look at you know a job that maybe is hung or isn't doing what you expect, um, and it, it gives you a very brief overview, and, and then you can make a decision as to whether you do want to to sort of fire up a full featured parallel debugger and look at it that way, or whether it's something you recognise and and can sort of put it to one side and, and move on. So, in relationship to a parallel debugger, do you have to compile your application with debugging symbols, or does PADB never even touch that part of the code? Um. I try very hard, and I believe I succeed in in making PADB very easy to run. So there's no there's no compilation or relinking or anything like that required. It's it it works purely at the process level. Um, so there's no there's there's no additional steps that you need to to do, to take to run PADB. That being said, though, let me clarify. It, it, if if you did compile your application with debugging symbols. The normal backtrace functionality would give you more information, like file and line number, in addition yeah, to just you, functioning. Yeah. yeah. If you if you compile with with minus g, the standard the standard option, then PDB will give you line numbers. If you don't, then then it won't. Um, and that's the limitation of GDB. It's not. There's there's no special compiler wrappers or library that PADB ships with. Okay, so it doesn't require debugging symbols. It just works at the process level. What interface is it actually talking to MPI? You said this was for Quadrix. No, Quadrix is hardware. Is it actually looking at Hardware, or is it looking at the libraries? And if so, does it have to be coded specifically for the library? Um, so no, nothing needs coding specifically. Um, PADB will work with any any parallel job. Um, it's not MPI specific. There's a couple of features that that only work in the presence of MPI, but it will give you stack traces, things like uh, uh, you know, sort of global arrays or NWCAM or things like that that don't necessarily involve MPI. Um, where it gets its information from is either it can either just sort of grub around in slash proc and, and collate the information back to the back to the user, or simply from GDB. So anything that GDB can can get, PADB can potentially get as well. With some additional with an additional caveat that there are some MPI specific features. There's a there's a MPI debugger DLL that I'm sure Jeff actually knows too much about that that PADB can interface with and give you some very deep down and, and specific information about MPI in particular. Yeah, so actually let's step back and, and clarify one thing. So so none of this is Quadrix specific, right? You were talking about how this motivation came about while you were working at Quadrix an eon ago, right? Yes, this is a it's an open source project. The license is LGPL. Um, it happened to start when I was at Quadrix, as I say, purely out of purely out of our needs at the time. Um, Quadrix is no longer with us, but the, the beauty of open source is that you know this code has evolved and now supports a, a wide range of, of hardware and software. Well, sorry, it doesn't really support any hardware. It, 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 it inter interacts purely with the software. But it, cool. Okay, so tell us what kinds of things you do get when you use PADB on an MPI application. Um. The specific features for MPI is something called the message queues. So when you when you send a receive a message, when you send a message, it goes in the in the send queue, and when another process sends you a message, it goes in the receive queue. Um, as you know, with MPI, these queues are you know, they're asynchronous, and you've got sort of asynchronous send asynchronous sends and receive, and sometimes with sends you don't know where they're from. So um, so so PADB can come in and and look at a process and say, well, this rank has you know is, is it, this rank is waiting to receive 12 messages, this rank is waiting to receive you know, three or four messages, and this rank over here is waiting to receive 128 messages. And, and right. You can also that. see who they're waiting for and what tag and what communicator and stuff, right? Yeah, the, the message size, the the um, me the data, the, the MPI data type, um, where they're from, the communicators. Right, the whole receive signature. So this is actually really...